Congratulations coach, another chapter under your belt. This was a key chapter in our quest to become a child-centered coach. Remember that our job is to give children what they need and want at different stages of development so they can enjoy a positive and developmental sport experience. In this chapter, we focused on the who of the coach decision-making model. To do so, we put our 4D goggles and explored how children develop from a biopsychosocial perspective across the four beams of the SPEC model. As we travel along the four beams of the SPEC model, we saw that children change dramatically from 5 to 12 years of age on all four dimensions. It is paramount for coaches to get a grip of how this multidimensional development happens. The key, as always, is to keep children in the learning zone, creating enough stretch for them to develop without overwhelming them. Not a small feat. At a social level, we emphasize the need to create opportunities for children to interact and work with other children and adults. In this way, they are able to grow their repertoire of social skills. Small group work and problem-solving activities were recommended. From a physical perspective, we showed you how growth is steady during the childhood years. This creates the conditions for kids to learn a great variety of foundational motor skills and so coaches should really promote this in their sessions. As children enter puberty, their height and weight increase rapidly. As coaches, we must be mindful of their new, quick changing proportions, which will be causing havoc in their general and specific coordination, and help them relearn some basic skills they had already mastered before their growth spread. In terms of emotional development, the key is understanding that children must be given the time and opportunity to first label and understand their emotions. Once they can do this, they will be able to progressively be aware of the emotions they are experiencing and their impact on themselves and on other people. From here, our role as coaches is to support them through this process of gaining emotional self-regulation. Scolding and shouting will not cut it. Explanations, discussions and role modeling will go a lot further. Ah, and remember, children can progress and regress emotionally. So don't be disheartened if a child all of a sudden seems not to be able to control an emotion that they had no problem with before. Finally, we looked at cognitive development we saw that the capacity of children to receive and assimilate information, to work through problems and find multiple solutions, to use abstract thinking, and to produce and communicate information for others, will increase dramatically all through childhood. Again, as a coach, our job is to be constantly testing these capacities and to be on the lookout for opportunities to stretch them and take them to new levels. The activities we use the pedagogical choices we make and our leadership style may need to constantly adapt to this ever-changing landscape. Isn't that fun? Okay, so before we wrap up this chapter, let's review again some very important ideas we introduced earlier that should always be at the back of our mind when thinking about child development. One, development is not linear. Children will take steps forward and steps back we must be patient. Two, all developmental areas are interconnected. At times, one can be a gatekeeper to another. For instance, a child who cannot regulate emotions may struggle to learn and to develop cognitively. Three, children develop at different paces on the four beams. That's why we have to consider all beams and not base our coaching on just the more visible physical beam. And four, Two children of the same chronological age may be poles apart in one or more of the beams because they may have a different biological or training age. That is, because they may be early or late maturers or because they may have been training for longer. Okay, that was a wild ride indeed. Thank you to all the experts that have helped us make sense of this very important topic. Now go to the quiz and smash it! Thanks for watching and see you in the next chapter. 
where we will fully explore the idea of physical literacy, movement skills and conditioning the children's body so they can lay a solid foundation to build a big house on when the time is right.